Hi, I'm Josh. Uh, I'm here. <laughs> this is horrendous. I'm here. These are headphones. Yeah. I've got legs. Uh, <laughs> I'm Josh. I, uh, I do a bit of singing. I do a bit of social media stuff. And I've known Jamie since Barbados nine years ago. <laughs> and now finally he's got a spare slot because about eight people have pulled out and I'm here. So let's have a good time. Josh, come on, everyone. There we go. <laughs> Josh, welcome to is the that, party. Is that, that was, okay? That was fab, dude. Fantastic. No, hey, buddy, listen. No, I, when we the last time we saw each other was the as you said the Attitude yes. Awards. Yes. Um, and we had a great chat there. And also, what I like the reason why I really you, you got annoyed at that awards. Why you said you didn't get hit on enough. I didn't. This is true. He was so I annoyed. Didn't. He was so he, pissed he, off. He just looked constantly angry the whole <laughs> yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> thought I'm never getting on his podcast. <laughs> but you, but you always get hit on. I think I That's, don't think so. Yes. No, 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 but no, that's not true. Well, where have you heard this? Why did I just assume good looking dude, no. charming dude? No. Really? It doesn't happen, no. I mean, I'm married, so. That's you know, true. Chloe, Chloe's probably listening. That that's doesn't true. happen, Chloe, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> it's just completely. <laughs> no one just... ever says anything. No, yeah, yeah. no one speaks to me, actually. <laughs> no, I'm quite a, quite a loner when I leave the house. <laughs> but I do think what just I love about you is you're the same as me. The reason why we get on, I yeah. think, is we're, we're quite vulnerable and we're yeah. quite um, open about everything that we've been through and when we sat next to each other that chat um you know and probably to kick things off in that way is that you uh you'd been sort of gone through quite a sort of intense process mentally yeah. and you've been vocal about it as well yeah I, I i uh yeah two and a half years ago there's no way i could be here today talking leaving the house even really? so i've been through a I've been through a journey and um, I think like you said, we were chatting at the Attitude Awards and I think there's not many men in our industry that talk about this stuff. So actually when you meet someone, you know, like when we were chatting, it's so refreshing to hear that I'm not alone in the industry as a bloke that also feels the way I do. It's mm. really nice. So yeah, I mean, I mean, I've been in some really, really tough, dark spaces, but uh, I'm kind of getting towards, I'm getting out of it now, which is quite nice. Can you feel yourself getting out of it? I can feel it. It's like a kind of, light. It's a, it, I can see the light, you know? You can breathe again. I feel like, yeah, I feel religious for the first time in my life. Um, but it's, just, it's nice. It's um, honestly, there's no way two and a half years ago I could have left the house to do this. My anxiety, my depression, the kind of confidence in my ability to hold myself mm. just wasn't there. So this is, it's nice to kind of feel like I can actually do the things I want to do again. It's nice. It's so interesting because I always think, you know, and and for the listeners who don't know, um, and we're going to get into all of that, is that you you were in Union J, yes, huge boy band, um, on the X Factor. You how young were you at the time? Nineteen. What? Audition? Yeah, that yeah. I auditioned at nineteen. I first auditioned for X Factor when I was fourteen. So like I tried to. Oh, really? Yeah, man. I got to boot camp at fourteen, which was cool. That is so yeah, young. It's good, but it's like at, at school I was X Factor boy. So every time I walked past anyone older than me at school, they'd do the X sign at me. So it was kind of like it was great, but it was also a bit of a curse. I'd probably just flinch. It's yeah. Like, oh, fuck. What's he like, like, fighting me? I thought you were about to beat me out. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit weird. X. What is that? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. oh, now I get it. Oh, yeah, now I get it. X Factor. Did yeah. you use good that one. X back? Like, exactly. Yeah. Good X-Men. one, mate. Yeah. Fuck. It's, Fucking loser. So that so. It's, it's funny because we all desire to have that sort of fame or well, not all of us, but that, where you think that when you're younger, celebrities mm. or people on TV or people achieving things is actually like sexy and cool. But, mm. And then you do start doing it and all they do is make fun of you. 100%. Yeah, it's, it's not, not nice. So what did you, how did you counter it at that school? I just, do you know what? I didn't care. I, I did care. I'd be lying if I said I didn't care, but I have, I, I always wanted to be in a band. Like I, I grew mm. up listening to like Blue um, in, in the old, you know, bunk bed and I got the old city Walkman out and was listening to their songs, singing along and all of that. And, uh, now it's funny cause we were asked to go on tour with them recently. And it's like, it's just, if you'd have told like 12 year old Josh that I'd have been like, are you kidding? Like it's insane. But now we're, you know, now we're a bit too busy for that. <laughs> no, we're not, but it's weird. It's like this kind of, like, God, you know, we can't do it. I'm so sorry. I don't have the time. It's, it's mad. It's this kind of really so, kind so of, you're not doing it, we're not doing it. No, unfortunately too it would have been great. Blue. No, not too busy. It, uh, to be honest with you, it's normally the time I go away with the missus and yeah. that holiday at the end of the year is a vital one. For you me. need that. Yeah. Mate, sure. I need to re I need to kind of just recharge. Like it's more important than work to me that. But so you, you're, you're 14 years old. You go and do X Factor. Yeah. You get to boot camp. Yep. How do you, 14 years old and dealing with that, that's, you have no clue by any emotion, anything that's going on, that's thrown into the deep end pretty quickly. It's insane, mate. It's absolutely insane. You, uh, my mum was at boot camp with me because she completely like, you know, just 
cramped every bit of style I had at the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you don't really understand it. And then it's kind of, funnily enough, the only year I didn't audition for X Factor between the age of 14 and 19 when I did Union J was the year One Direction were formed. And if I, oh yeah, mate. So, so, so the year before One D formed, Simon Cowell said to me, you've got to come back. Hmm. We're setting up a boy band next year. And uh, I didn't come back. I was in another band at the time, mate, fuming. I would have been so rude. You know, rich and... But oh you know, it is what it is. Oh my God. Everything, everything happens for a reason. Absolutely. So, um, so yeah. And, and perhaps that was, you know, uh, you know, and you said at the beginning that you were vulnerable and stuff that maybe that would have been too much. I, yeah, I mean, yeah, you see the other lads in One Direction, you hear their stories just because they were in the most successful band doesn't mean mm. they're not seriously unhappy and struggling with their mental health. So all you've got to do is read about Zane, read about you know, Louis. Des Liam. L Liam. What the hell was that interview? Insane. Did you, have, you, have you seen this interview? I think I know which one you're talking about. Well, yeah. it's, it's the one that just happened. Yeah. Was this outside uh, like a the award ceremony or something? Where, where no, there, there's another one. That, no, oh, there's he, another one? There's another one. But, oh, but like, look, I, I, oh, was that the one where he does the American accent? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, really, yeah. really odd. I, that's so funny. I, I didn't know what was going on. Why did you going? find it really funny? <laughs> I thought he was taking the piss <laughs> yeah. at first. Um, and he's getting so profound about Will Smith. You that's know, what like, it was. It, that's what it was. They're two greatest like articulators of our time. It's like, what the hell is going on here? Bless him though. Like The interview is like, sorry, just a quick anecdote of what's going on. Do you know the worst thing about it though is like he probably knew the moment he did it. Oh no! <laughs> but you, it's, 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 it's out there. It's gone. This is with our industry. It's like you can't fuck up. You can't no. make a mistake because you are judged and you are crucified straight away. It's have, actually sad. I would have loved to have heard his inner monologue. He's like, "Are you doing an American accent? <laughs> Just stop speaking." Oh no! Just, why are you talking? No, for fuck's sake, stop speaking. And like, once you commit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, now yeah, finish yeah, the yeah. interview. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's then, really <laughs> fucked us up. Right? And then you start changing your accent because you're like, "Oh, I can't quite remember." <laughs> <laughs> was yeah. Where am I from? Like, yeah. Am yeah, I it's from? Mad. <laughs> What's going what? on? But I think it's different with being musicians. Musicians, I feel um, you're much more um, criticized than, mm. than, 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 I don't know why, because you're meant to, you, you, you have a responsibility to, to be a sort of um, inspiration to fans and yep. be a good role model. Did you feel that? For sure. Yeah. We, Twitter was like the main social media platform when we started and, it was so, anyone can direct message you, anyone can message you, anyone can tweet you, they can mm. say what they want. And it's just, you get this pressure of loads of fans will sort of say, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to harm myself. I'm going to hurt myself. I'm going to cut myself unless you reply. And it's, it's almost like you can easily sit there and think, well, they're not. But then actually yeah. you think, well, shit, what if they do? So you have this responsibility for your fan base and your the, you know, because these guys, without them, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. Yeah. We wouldn't be having the experiences we're having. So you actually feel a responsibility to look after them. Yeah. Like they look after you because they support you. They're looking after what, us. What do you, what do you do in that circumstance? Because I, I, I had this before. On, yeah. When you on, were made in Chelsea, on, you had this, you had this fan base. That no, was, someone was, <laughs> someone was sim similarly doing this yeah. thing saying, Hey, like, can you help me? I'm going to, you know, end my oh, life. Shit. And I was just like, fuck, I don't know what the fuck mm. to do here. Like, what mm. am I supposed to do? So I, I started engaging with them and was like trying to offer like what help I could. Yeah. But then I think in doing that, it was just like exacerbating the thing. And then I was like, oh my God, what's this actually about? Like, yeah. And so what you, you don't know what to do. Like, what do you do? What is the best thing in that situation? I think, I think the only thing you can do is just talk to them like a friend. Just talk to them, you know, if just sort of say, look, if that was my little sister or my little, you know, my brother or my friend and they were coming to me asking for help, just treat them like human beings, talk to them, be positive. But then the thing is you also have, there's also definitely people out there that will say things for attention. Mm. So it's not real a lot of the time, but I, in, for years, I couldn't take that risk. So I would constantly, yeah. that would give me anxiety. That though. is anxiety it does give already. Me anxiety. That's anxiety already though. It does. If you're, if you're worrying about that situation. There's been a girl recently that, you know, since we did the, my band got back together for a 10 year anniversary show recently last month. And there's been some people that have been struggling and they've come back and messaging a lot. And it kind of, you're like, shit, like I've, I've got to look after this person. I've got, I've got a responsibility, but that's it's, difficult. It's weird though, cause you're like, I'm so unqualified to be, yeah. to be giving this advice, but here I am in this weird position where I'm like Googling books for like them to read and shit. And I'm like, I don't know what to but, say. But I'm hang on saying. guys, can I, I like, is that, is that your responsibility? Or like if someone is messaging you on social media, cause they're reaching out to you and they're saying these things, I get that mm. that's incredibly tough to see, but they're suffering everywhere, right? Mm. Um, does that become your responsibility 
to to try and look after these hundreds or thousands or millions of people that keep messaging mm -hmm. you or other band members or whatever it is? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know whose responsibility it is, but clearly people need help. Yeah. And I think for me, it's like, because I'm so vocal about my mental health and my struggles, what you see is what you get with me. I'm not, if I'm having a shit day, I'll happily tell people. If I'm having a good day, I'm happily tell people that. But I think they clearly need, people need help. And that's why I constantly want to talk about it to raise awareness because mm. I want to make my profile and my Instagram and my social media a happy place to kind of, not happy place, but just a place where you can just have some normal, normal conversations, normal pictures, some real stuff happening. Yeah. So um, I don't know what where the responsibility comes, you know, who's who it lies with, but I feel that responsibility. And actually I quite, in a, in a messed up kind of way, it's like almost, it. I like it. Yeah, purpose. It's a bit of therapy for me. Mm. Yeah. Because if I know I'm helping other people out there, I also know I'm not alone, which helps. That's nice to know you're not alone if you're struggling, right? Mm. Everyone mm. likes knowing they're not alone, but also, it's, it's good for me to talk about it and keep, you know, cause it reminds me of things I've learned or, or, or things I've picked up or books I've read, like you said earlier, it's, it, it helps with everything really. Why, why do you think there was a desire to be like, uh, this singer when you were younger? Was it the, the art form? Was it the fame side? Was it everything together? What was it? <sighs> it's a good question. I've never thought it's just, I love singing, mate. Really? I just, I, I feel, I feel, I feel like that's where I belong. But like that's the only way I can describe it when I'm on stage or when I'm singing and I'm kind of, I get, I just have this feeling of like, yeah, that's it. That, that, that's when like things feel good. That's it's when like, I don't It's worry. like kind of like really? ultimate expressionism, isn't it? Yeah. Like you're just like letting out 100%. your like. Frustrations your emotions, or creativity, yeah. emotions. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's good. I think one of the most amazing things is about to like evoke an emotion or response from someone else right. through, through your action so what, must be what do you powerful. mean what do you mean by that as in, well, like, as in like you know he's singing and and you're watching someone that's really connecting with yeah. that and you can see that you're evoking an emotion in them yeah and that must just yeah. be like oh pretty, mate the, the 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 moment that you know we're, we're not there there are millions of more successful artists than us in the world for sure but we were lucky to to be able to do some incredible things and when you sing a song that you've written or you've been involved in and there are thousands of people singing it back or singing it with you that mm -hmm. is a feeling that you can't explain to someone that's not had that before. Yeah. It's an amazing feeling. It's a proud feeling. It's, it's surreal. It's quite, it's just, and, and when we did the show, like it's been six years since I had that. Last, really? Yeah. And you know, that was our first show for six years, uh, you know, last month and just incredible. Yeah. I, I saw it, my I saw it on your family. social media. I mean, we, we, we oh. experienced that as well. You know, we used to go on PAs and we'd stand, <laughs> no, we'd, we'd, we'd stand up there on stage and we'd evoke this emotion and people would just go like that. they just go like <laughs> this. Just, this. Just, We've had plenty was, of those, mate. It was wicked. Uh, yeah, I've had a WKD thrown at me before in a, in, a, in a pub gig, in a club gig thing straight after X Factor and I just picked up and drank it and I actually got some... The last weird disease. I actually got some, some STIs for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still struggling with that, actually. I'm still struggling, poor Chloe. <laughs> oh my God. I had that in Coventry. I got. A, I was at an underage party and some little kid was swearing at me. And the front, I got him kicked out and the bouncer made him apologize to me. <laughs> the back. How much great is that power oh, though? Yeah. I chucked that little prick out. <laughs> He was 15. I don't mean, care. Yeah, go mess him up outside. Yeah, he's hilarious. Do little shit, in. mate. He deserves it. Out. Wait, Colin. Don't come back. You s stop the music. <laughs> stop the music. Him. You. Yeah. Yeah. Big now, are you? He, Big now, you 15 year old. <laughs> Big the, now. He's the one that slides in my DMs now asking for help. Ever yeah, since yeah, you've yeah, done yeah. that to him, that ruined his me. life. <laughs> Honestly, Love Colin. I was outside the back, out, outside the back in Coventry, and he took him around and he went, What are you going to say to him? And I went, yeah, What are you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> How much did you love that, though? You horrible <laughs> bastard. It's not like... really bad. And then the other time was when I was in Exeter on a PA, and some guy was like laughing at me, ha ha. And he tried to like throw like a weird punch at him. So I threw a punch back. <laughs> And hit him on the forehead. <laughs> but, but you punched someone on the PA. Not really. It was, it was like, a, it was like a, I stretched my you, arm out. You were like a fucking nightmare. I stretched my arm out and he walked into it. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Hard. Yeah. Was that your last ever PA? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Then I spent some time in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Did a couple of PAs in there. Didn't, didn't go quite no, as I was quite to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but what, so you, you do the boot camp at 14. You then yeah. miss the year of uh, One Direction, which is, that's insane. Oh, that, I'm fuming. Yeah, it's annoying. It's what it is. I say, there's always a rumor. Um, there was a, the guy, there was, there was a, the gardener at my brother's school. He always used to say um, that he was meant to be in the Beatles and he left the Beatles 
before they came in. He must be a really old gardener. I don't yeah. know yet, but <laughs> very slow. <laughs> yeah. Those He's weeds are still there <laughs> six weeks later. <laughs> yeah, but he always says he was in the Beatles before okay. Ringo, where everyone, someone came in yeah. and took his place. He said he's fuming as well. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I'd be fuming. But you then go back to X Factor the yes. following year. Yeah. And what is it like? Like, the, what is the whole? Because I hear X Factor is apparently coming back. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's coming back. Is it really? Maybe not on ITV, but apparently it's coming back. I saw it uh, in the news. It, dude, why? What a shit. Like, it's just, in my head, it's just, it, it was an amazing show for, what, 10, 15 years? Yeah. I think sometimes it's just better just to, to leave it. Do you know what I mean? Is it real? <laughs> how long is you got? It, is how, it, how long is this podcast? We can go for ages. It's, it's, um, to give it everything. Just, you, you just talk. I want to hear it all. Okay. What's it like? It's, it's, in, it's mental. We, we were, <laughs> we were t- <laughs> looking at my age. We were told. <laughs> He's where like, we Ollie, were Ollie, say, yeah, yeah. Ollie's going to like, no, don't what say anything. Say? Well, listen, listen. So, so I have. We were in a reality of many years, so we get it, right? You get it. Yeah, yeah. of course. I'm, I've spoken to you about it many yeah, yeah. times, but like, we, we were told where we were going to finish. What? On week like two. And it happened. So I don't know if that was just bollocks and it actually just kind of happened and it was a bit of a fluky kind mm. of someone trying to say are you uh, serious yeah 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 it's it's a machine mate it's a machine they they, they um i have every i have i i have nothing but positive experiences from it because mm. when that red light comes on and you know you're live to what 12 million people it's it's uh, incredible yeah. and to go from being a young lad that, that wanted to be in a boy van his whole life to then having that dream come true. It, I, I have nothing but fond memories and, and I can't thank them enough for it, but it's, I think they have more of a duty of care to, to look after the people. It felt like they knew who they wanted and they mm. knew who they, who they liked. And it was like, they were the ones that they cared about. And luckily we were in that, in that group. So they, they clearly liked us. Yeah. So we kind of felt supported through it, but I know from other people in the show that didn't do as well, it's a completely different story. And that's where it's tough. There's, there's a lot less reality in these shows, right? For sure. They've got their idea of what they want to happen and For sure. kind of shepherd it. 100%. Towards it's, that, a it's, it's a machine. It's a machine that churns out talent and, 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 and they want viewing figures. And then if they can have, if they can get some successful artists from it for Psycho, you know, mm. Simon's label, is, happy days. Is he a robot? Hey, I've, I've been to Barbados with him. Um, <laughs> I was in Barbados. Wait, we, we also, yeah, no, no, that, that was, was the Barbados. trip. That was the trip. You were with Simon Cowan, you didn't invite me over? Well, listen, we, we, we just met, mate. You and Simon would get on really well, I reckon. You were, <laughs> yeah. two peas in the pot. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It was funny, though, because, uh, you know, he's got those little dogs. Yeah. He's a squiddly um, and diddly or some, <laughs> some sort of squiddly some name. and diddly. Something like that. And, uh, yeah, I, I, he was in the pool and... Um, the dogs kind of jumped in. This is funny. <laughs> the dogs jumped in and uh, he sort of panics because they look like they're going to die. Like they're drowning. They're struggling at yeah. this point. Little squiddly and diddly. They're having a bit of a... And instead of him jumping in to help, he kind of gets his like kind of assistant. <laughs> he gets a lilo, pushes it out. And then like, and then all of a sudden you see these two dogs kind of floating across the pool, saved on a lilo. It's a very odd... But he's a really sweet guy. He's a really kind of like nice chap. Yeah. But he must. But um, he must be. Um, he's obviously a great businessman, right? Oh, he, 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 to, to create and oh. and incredibly creative. He's, he's he's got to see talent, know talent, know what works, know what doesn't work. He understands culture massively, 100%. without a doubt. So he must be pretty impressive to be around. Hundred percent. He's got. He's one of the few people I've met, and I don't know about you guys, but like you know, we're lucky. We meet some. Mm interesting people but he's one of those people kind of you you know you're in his presence if that makes sense yeah you're you like, feel yeah, it you feel it it's a, it's like shit simon's here wow yeah. please so, love me okay so where did you guys come in the x factor again we came fourth so we How yeah we came we got to the semi-final um and then straight signed to sony um and it was just like 100 miles an hour from then for like three and a half years mm. and then not and then it's kind of and then it's over like <sighs> it's so and we briefly spoke about it at the awards a few months ago, but it's just, it's a hundred miles an hour and then it's zero. It, it, it's nothing in between. It's uh, it's a lot to sort of. And you have so much purpose for so long. Mm. And the, the other thing is, is that like you have so much purpose, you're, you're wanted so much mm -hmm. um, and everything is so new and exciting and it's everything you've dreamed of. Yep. This is what you've wanted for all this time. And then 
suddenly, as you say, you 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 weirdly think it's never going to go. You think it's going to be there forever. Hundred percent. And then when it does go, it's a real freaking shock. It's and terrifying. Terrifying. You, mm. what, what age would you have been? You must have been. So mate, so we we had just had our most successful song. Um, do you know Ed Sheeran? Have you heard of him? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that guy? He beat us to number one. Uh, selfish, selfish bastard. That is so... It is selfish. That is that's so, he doesn't need any more. number one, isn't it? I think. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. It would have been our only one. Now I have to say number two. It's a lot shitter. That's so much <laughs> To be honest with you, it's got to the point now where I lie. <laughs> if, I, if I'm having like a kind of a chat to someone, I want to kind of impress them. I'm like, yeah, I've had a number one. It's midweek number one, but I don't say mid... I kind of go, yeah, we're going to number one. <laughs> So they're like, great, you've had a number one. I yeah. haven't had a number two. But who cares? <laughs> no um, one cares. So yeah, so basically, so we just had a really, the song, with, this, is, this is the crazy thing. So we ne I never felt more secure in the band, in, the, in my job. Mm -hmm. um, and I just met my wife now, Chloe. So I was, I was so happy. I was, life was just felt incredible. We went to LA together um, to have like a three-week holiday between singles. When I was out there, uh, I got a call from my manager. I knew something was up. Mm. just could tell i just had this really weird feeling when he said you need to call me mm. um i answered and i was on the on a conference call with the label with our manager everyone and they basically just said you dropped that was that was it what and it came out of and when i say seven weeks before we were number mm. two in the charts that's the difference between it's just, it was just insane like my whole life just kind of felt like it was just swept beneath my feet i know that sounds really mm. cringe and dramatic yeah. it just felt like I was at one high to the complete opposite. Yeah. It wasn't as even, I didn't see it coming. You know, when a lot of times like in, in, in musicians and stuff, you can, you see oh, that, you oh, that single slopped or that album's not done great. You can feel it slowly coming to an end. With us, it was like, yeah. it was none of that middle bit. So for me, that was what was so hard. And that's what hit me so hard. Do I guess, that, I guess it's, quite, it's quite tough. Like when you've been propelled to like instant fame yeah. like that almost. Yeah. And you're kind of like a lot of your power is is given to other people right so they have yeah. the ability to just fucking drop you whereas like if you'd kind of like built the the foundations around yourself, yourself. and you had a bit more control yeah. then but they can just go right see ya and you're like fuck okay you're like, what do i do now and, and you don't trust anyone you know like at this no. point like our accountant uh was stealing from us and he's now in prison which is just that's another story um, wait hang on a second your, your accountant's yeah. in prison our accountant james arthur this is crazy actually um James Arthur uh, was on the same year as us yeah. in the show. And we both, him and I, the, the band and, and James signed to the same accountant after the show. Mm. And he was stealing tens and tens, hundreds of thousands of pounds from James and us. And James was the one that actually realized it first. Mm. He sort of spoke to us about it and he was, him and his team put, took this guy to court and now he's in prison, which is mad. What? But you know, all of the, th there's so many stories. And when, when you kind of come from this, you just have no trust in anyone mm. in this industry. It's not even in this industry. You actually lose trust with human beings mm. because of the experiences we had. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's so... And you have no experience. Like no one's telling you about... that. There's no warning. This Nothing. is what's so scary, right? Is that we, we have a blueprint in life, right? And our blueprint can be being a musician or it can be being a teacher, whatever it may be. We yeah. all have blueprints. But no one, no one tees us up for our blueprints. And especially if you get a blueprint, which is, which your one was, where you want to be this, this musician, no one tells you, everyone just talks about the highs. Yep. No one explains the lows. Yep. No one tells you there's no security. No one tells you that actually potentially one day you may be dropped. No one says how to look after your money, how to be sensible with that. No one's giving you any information whatsoever. Your accountant was actually saying that, but he was just giving his own bank. <laughs> yeah, he was, ga he was gambling it. That's, that's the was crazy. It? What? Yeah, mate, it was on Bet365, uh -huh. Paddy Power. Oh my and God. And other, you know. And gambling it. Oh, mate, it was, it, the story's insane, yeah. It's insane. He was gambling our money uh, without us knowing. So then I think he just got in this kind of spiral. spiral where he was gambling other people's money that he looked after. So, when so. you, when with... Um, when you get that call saying you're dropped, mm -hmm. what, what does that mean? What does that even mean? Do they literally just say that to you? They say, look, yeah. got some bad news. So as in you were dropped from the band or- Dropped from the, the label. The, the label. The whole band is dropped from the label. Yeah, the whole right. band dropped from the label. Got it. Um, that's it. Sony are no longer, you know, releasing any more music. That's it. And we'll, we'll, Josh will chat when you're back from LA and then get back from LA and trying to get a meeting with my management at the time was impossible because- they just go on to the next, next yeah, yeah. person that's making the money. Next you know, we had some cow. shows. We had some shows booked in through that year because this happened at the start of the year. So what year had, are we at the moment? Oh, mate, 2016, I want to okay. say. Yeah. Um, 
2015 maybe i can't think uh and we luckily had shows with you know still earning decent you know fees mm. and stuff like that but it was like there was nothing after that yeah. and that was terrifying like terrifying and thank god i had my you know chloe there my missus mm. with me because i genuinely don't know what i would have done without her um oh my god. you know she helped me kind of she got me to somehow uh, got me into a model agency and i did other pieces and you know kept busy but it was mad, mate. It's, it, it, it was a crazy experience. Um, and then, like I said, a few months ago, you know, when we got back together to do a 10 year anniversary show, it was lovely because we didn't have that old team behind us. We didn't have the snakes. Yeah. People in, involved were lovely. They believed in us. And it was just really nice to actually do it again without people in it with, it, with, with hidden agendas. Or and taking to, everything from absolutely. Everyone's taking a profit. Mm. Absolutely, mate. Like... Yeah. Oh, dude, listen, um, we're going to talk more about this. We're going to stop there for part one, but I want to come back with part two because I think this is your the beginning of your your decline in your mental health, right? Yes. And, and also what we want to discuss is why boy bands aren't as popular as they once were. Yeah. That's the big thing. It's very true. It's very true. We should set one up. We should set one up. We would be. Look, I mean, oh I, I didn't get the blonde. I was blonde once, actually, boys. Come I'm on. like I like half blonde. You got the I'm, blonde. I'm blonde. And then I'll just go the kind of brunette. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can stand out. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Stand out in the middle. Are you ready for part two? I'm so buzzing. We'll see you in part two. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, welcome back to part two of Private Parts. Still here with Josh Cuthbert. Cuth. I've made the cut. Yeah, you've made, you've the, made cut, the cut, baby. Does, does everyone make the second half? Not everyone. Have you Some, done it well? Some people like, do storm out. Do they? Yeah. No, yeah. it's more, do you kind of go, your shit, get out? Wait, if it's a bad one, okay. if it's a bad one, then um, it tends to be a lot quicker. Yeah, okay. It's like you speed through and, yeah. and basically it revolves me just talking. Okay. I just talk about it's basically things. basically your, you. Yeah, your, me just you. and Alex just talking. Interviewing yourself. Yeah, that sort of happens if it's a bad one. But um, no, dude, this is so interesting because I just, I, I just, I think so many people, um, so many, like this is the problem with like, Instagram, right? We have like, so many people have this sort of uh, like hero idea of what the music industry is like and what fame yeah. is like and what all these things are like. And actually it doesn't quite add up to what it's meant to be a lot of the time. And, you know, you know, your, your, your drop from the label, you're how old at the time? 24, three, 23, 23, 23, 23 years 23. old. Yeah, 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 23. That is, you're a baby. Literally. People are just finishing university. Crazy. Oh, and then you have to then figure out what you want to do next. And you you want to, you still want to do music. So do you then try and go and do a solo career? What happens? I just had no confidence in myself, mate. I just thought like, well, because because you're made to think you, back then you, you needed a label. You needed Sony, you needed a Universal mm -hmm. or a big label to kind of be successful and to have the platform to release. So now it's actually the music industry is a lot better because you can release independently. Mm -hmm. There are so many more independent labels that that give people a platform to and you know tiktok i mean mate yeah tiktok's like my close like, like, close always like you need to sing on tiktok but it's like a mental block for me i don't have the confidence mm. to put myself out there and be vulnerable dude Just why to, what are you talking about bro, bro, i don't do it i do and i do i post the old one i dab you know i did a harry styles cover a couple of weeks ago and um i mean he's killing it isn't he what an absolute boy. <laughs> he smashed it. Mate, he's literally the only pop star in the world. He's, he's, he's just, smashed he's it. He's just like, I saw it. I was in a restaurant uh, with, you with, saw him. with the wife and he popped in and I just thought, he's just, you're just too cool, mate. <laughs> Is he, does he, does he look cool as well? No, do you know what I mean? no, but he was just wearing a really like average hoodie, but he still looked. I don't know what it is that pop stars don't exist anymore, do they? No, this is what we're they saying. They don't exist. Mm. But why is that? Social media. That, that's my opinion because they're so accessible now. You can like, yeah. if you want to know what Sam Smith or Ed Sheeran, actually Ed Sheeran's a bit different, but if you want to know what these pop stars are doing, just go onto their Instagram stories and they're a Goodwood Festival of Speed or they're at Ascot <laughs> Race Course. That's because it was the I was sitting there yesterday, that's why. Right. <laughs> it's just fresh in the mind. I, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I was talking about this the other day, I can't remember if it was with you, but like the age of like the cool celebrity, like it's just gone. Done. There's no one We're the coolest, that, we're the yeah, coolest. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and I held on to it. That, that says how fucking <laughs> shit it is. Struggling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just struggling. It's fucked, yeah. yeah. I think I've held on to it. I don't think I've sold out. I don't think I've sold out. But it's true. It's why, like, Harry Styles is freaking cool he's and he's a legend. And also, as you said, like, boy bands. Yeah. There's, like, not a, 
Boy bands aren't really around anymore. There's no more blues or boy zones blues, or uni jams. Right. Westlife. 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 Yeah. Sure. Westlife. Why, why is that? You know, we can do you can do reunions or come back or yeah. whatever. But there's there's why, no new. There's, there's no, no new, new. There's no. We were like actually the mad thing is is like the band I was in. We were the last ones to kind of come through and do something. You know, they've, uh, we were the, probably the least successful out of most boy bands that have been well. But like. We were the last one that's had some sort of success in the industry. And I'm like, why? I, I don't know why. Is we're it not this, cool anymore? That's what I mean. We, we're in this kind of world where like, especially in England, England and the UK are the most judgmental. But it's crazy. It's insane. Mm. It's insane. It's like people in this, in, this, in this country want to see people fail. Mm. Yeah, Whereas we, you go to America or you go to Europe, they, they, big, they big their talent, they big their own up. Whereas here, yeah. we just want people to fail. And I think that's what it is. I think it's jealousy. To, a lot it of is, it's all jealousy. It's jealousy. And I think that... Um, People have a voice now that they never used to have because of social media. So people can have opinions. Mm. People can belittle people. People can kind of shoot them down before they even get a chance. I think that's, that's what it is. But mate, like boy bands, in my opinion, there's always a gap for a boy band. I like, I know. Like, but do you think things do this cyc cyclical where it can come back and people are going to start liking boy bands again? So if you're right. So if you two, right with the, with the missus, you're driving down and, mm. and backstreet boys, I want it that way comes on the radio. Are you turning it off? I'm, I'm turning it up, baby. Turning That's it. what I'm saying. I'm freaking turning that Everyone shit up. Everyone fucking loves it. Everyone listens to those you songs. Are my fire. I can't the, listen. The, 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 the shake, the shake in your, don't in say your ready. voice then. What, are you, are you ready? trying to add vibrato? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what the hell? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Literally <laughs> shuddering. <laughs> All right, here we go. You ready for the shit? Let's get a moment for you. Here we go. <clears throat> you ready? Yeah, I've been ready for a while. Fucking ready, mate. You are my fire. The one. Desire, oh, believe. <laughs> oh, God. When I say I want it that way. Very good, mate. Well, that's actually, oh, you know come what? Come on. Do you know what? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Minute, you're done. No, go. Oh, come on. Give not a, a fucking chance. Give a couple not, of lines. Do a couple what, of what lines. What is your karaoke song? Oh, Back in bit, the old. Probably be a bit of Robbie Williams. Bit of Robbie. Every, yeah. yeah. Does you, you have to do... No, what? I don't have to do anything. <laughs> yeah. true, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> no, no, exactly. You don't have to do anything. It's a free country. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I yeah, you, that. you've made a point no, out yourself. Do so. so you didn't, you didn't, when you sent me the kind of agenda of today, there was no, Josh, you have to sing a bit of fucking uh, boys to men to be fair i would happily sing a bit of boys to but men. where you, you it's so funny looking at you as an individual right good yeah. looking you no. success no just from an outside point of view right i'd say you're good looking you're you're, you're charming as hell you you're you're hilarious you've got a beautiful wife you um calm have, down you have <laughs> you have everything going for you though right yeah. but yet you have this inner dialogue within yourself where you feel like you're not good enough yeah every day but why why is that? And I understand, I mean, you know, a lot of people in this room may understand that sort of negative yeah. voice, but how do you articulate it? Why, why do you think that's that? I, uh, October, 2019, 20, no, 2020 October, I checked myself into a mental health institute retreat. It's not retreat because it definitely wasn't a retreat. It's fucking hideous, but it was eight days of learning. Um, it was a thing called Hoffman Institute, which is where mm. you give your phone in and you do like an intense course to learn about your childhood learn about why you feel the way you do and that was a massive eye-opener for me because you can actually tell a lot of it comes from your childhood so my parents split up when i was young um and both remarried so you learn a lot about the reasons why you feel certain things mm. and that was really helpful for me and since then i've had therapy and i've kind of gone through this journey of learning why i feel the way i do but i think it's like i just I lack confidence in my bit, my, myself, because I just constantly compare myself. If that makes sense. Mm. Like I will constantly look online and, and I will say, well, he's better than me. He's much, mm. he's, he's fitter than me. He's much this than me. He's, he's got a better voice than me. He looks better than me. He's this. And it's, I think that's the problem with our industry, our work, you know what everyone's doing mm. because it's out there. Whereas like my mates that do normal nine to five jobs, they don't know what, other people in their industry are doing on a day to day, you know, they don't know how successful the deals that are coming in or whatever it is. Whereas us, it's right in our face. It's rubbed in our face every single day. Mm. I think that's what it is. It's the constant comparing and, and just feeling a bit, a bit shit about myself really. And, and you, and you, it's pretty, it's brave, right? Speaking about that. Cause I think a lot of people, I say this every single time. And I always said, when you start putting it on yourself and saying, by the way, this is what I've experienced. That's like a, the most powerful thing you can yeah. do. Um, why did it lead you to check yourself into the mental health industry? What happened before that? 
uh, being honest, like I thought I would lose my wife. That's the, that's the reality of it. I thought if I keep going and keep acting how I am and treating her the way I'm treating her, I will lose her. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and I was like, that's, she's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And my number one, everything, my best friend. So I can't lose her. And then I think it just got to the point where I had to do something drastic. And that mm. was, that was the thing. Like I not having an hour therapy a week or, or something like that, or that wasn't enough. I needed something intense mm. to really reconnect with myself and kind of realize what, what I like and what are important to me, the things in my life that mean so much to me. And I came out of that week and I just broke down, you know, to my wife and was like, I'm so sorry. Like mm. I've treated you like shit for too long in the last year and a half. Yes, it's been a pandemic and it's not easy for everyone, but um, I think that just happened. I just thought, you know what, Josh, like you have so much to be positive about in your life. Mm. Just start to really realize that. Mm. Um, I think that that's that that's the hardest thing, right? Sometimes is when um, when you're in that sort of space where you're anxious or depressed or whatever it is, and, yeah. you, and you feel like you can't get out of it. Yeah. Um, what you start doing is you, you when you're it, it becomes a self obsession. Like you're just every single day is it's this negative thing like banging on the door, and all you can do, and actually what it does, and unfortunately is it does spread on to the people around that you love. Yeah. that you love and you start leaning on all of them all the time yep. and actually what you don't realize is then they get affected as well and the hardest thing to do is to not use your partner as a therapist 100%. or your or your mother or your sister whatever it is um but it's also great self-awareness that you realize that potentially you were doing that yeah man, and, and also it's uh it's it's, it's a, i want to raise awareness actually around um what it's like for partners what it's like for because she's for example chloe's never sh struggled massively with her mental health but actually dealing with someone you know her husband me that was going through that that's also very damaging for her mm -hmm. so actually i think there needs to be more awareness around what it's like for the wives the boyfriends the girlfriends of being with someone that struggles with it because actually those conversations aren't really spoken you know there's no support for them do you know there's support mm -hmm. for us for me mm -hmm. that went through it i went and check myself into somewhere and I have therapy, but actually where's the support for the, the loved ones? Because they're just left with the sort of dirt at the yeah, end. And, and that is literally how I'm at times for treating her. Like, you know, and, and, and it's now I'm kind of through that ish. I can sit there and go, how on earth did I ever do that? How on earth did mm. I ever say the things I yeah, said? Yeah, but when you're in the wrong mental state, that's the hardest thing. And also yeah. if, you, if you're if you hating yourself- How can you love someone else? You can't, it's impossible. Yeah. Isn't that a RuPaul thing? Yeah, I think? that's-, that's I don't, there, there we go. It's, it's a real How, a how can you love yourself? Something like that, Chloe always banks says that. It's a RuPaul it's thing, a, it's, it's, it's actually. It, I think so. No, you know. No. It's your favorite quote. <laughs> you literally text me on the way here saying- <laughs> No, you didn't. You better love yourself. Amen, sister. But, it, but that, but I think- you, I remember you saying, maybe this is uh, too personal. I hope you don't mind me saying, yeah. I remember you saying that you just, you, you, you couldn't look at yourself in the mirror, mate. You, and, and, and that is insane. And, you, and it was about, you just thought that you were the most disgusting person inside and out. You just, yeah. you know, you thought that you had nothing. Yeah. Well, that, that is your brain almost still tweaking, right? Still have that. Still have that. I had that, really? I had that this morning, big time. Yeah. Yeah. Big, 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 like literally I genuinely struggled to leave the house this morning. I thought yeah. like seeing you two guys, like, yeah, like I felt this kind of pressure of having to look a certain way. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a really, it's an illness. It's, it's called body dysmorphia is what mm. is the kind of term for it. It's when you kind of look at your body and you, you see something different than other people see. Mm -hmm. um, and actually when it's, it doesn't matter how many times someone can say, you look great. Like, what are you on about? In, in a way that actually makes it worse because you're sitting there thinking, well, I don't fucking feel it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's mad. Like now I look back, I just went on holiday, um, you know, recently and I've never hated my body more mm -hmm. ever. And I, it's funny because I look back at pictures of myself from holiday six, seven, you know, well, less three, four years ago. And I remember hating myself there and then. But now I look back at those pictures and go, fucking hell, he's ripped. Yeah. Or fuck me, he looks, I look great. But how fuck mad is that? Like, yeah. because at that time I hated myself. Mm. Like I would have to do 50 press ups before I went to the beach. Like, you know, get, I, I've brought these, I still do, it's a bit pathetic. But I bring these bands with me <laughs> because that could do a little arm pump. It's, 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 it's insane. It's not pathetic, dude. No, it's just, it's just your brain. It's that my brain yeah. telling me, unless you do that, you have that there is no way I'm going to feel remotely 1% mm. capable of taking my top off on a beach. What well, is it? Is it anxiety? Is it, what is it? How does it manifest itself? Is it just, cause that self hate is, is deep, right? Yeah. Um, and so it, does it just, 
is it sort of fear, right? Do, do is you it feel like a pressure to to be this kind of like? I guess like we're talking about like perceived, like the ladder of perceived yeah. success, right? Like yeah. you're supposed to be, or you're perceived as someone who's like fa like fairly high up the ladder, right? Yeah. And then you feel like actually you're not yeah. in yourself. Yeah. So then you're like, you feel like you've got to put on this persona. I mean, I felt like that a little bit with when we were doing Made in Chelsea. Yeah. Like you, you know, you meet people in the yeah. street and immediately I'd gone from just being me to suddenly yeah. I had to put on yeah. this persona because they knew me from the TV. Yeah. They had this image of me. So I suddenly had to try and be kind of a little bit like that. Yeah. And it's, it's fucking stressful it's, after a while. It, like, it wears you down. Of course it so does. So imagine for you, you know, you're perceived as this really good looking guy, really successful guy. So you're thinking, right, if I go out to the beach, I've got to be exactly I that. I've got to be that guy. I can't, I can't not look at a thing. Yeah. Like, I have to be like on point. Is that kind it of It is, mate. You've hit the nail on the head. That's literally, yeah. And uh, you, you, I'm sure you guys have had it where um, I've been, we were on our honeymoon uh, three, four years ago and there was a pap on the beach, had no idea. And I was just, we were just going about our business. You know, no one looks good on the phone. I mean, if you look good on the beach, you're lying, right? Everyone's sweaty and you're like 10 chins <laughs> looking at your phone. The phone's a shambles. You can't see what you're doing. Like you put <laughs> suntan <laughs> lotion on, like, you know, you like, you I know, like I'm drowning. Mate, you, honestly, yeah. I'm drowning in my own sweat. You're worried fucking, about your gooch tan. I mean, no, I don't know why I was kind of putting suntan. I'm very sweaty. Babe, rub it in. Go oh on. my God, that's wet. Um, it's very hot here. Uh, it's hot. It's, it's hot. hot. Sweat. It's boiling in here. I bet you they gave me some fucking power. I think you need some suntan, suntan lotion for this, mate. But no, um, and, and we, we literally, we woke up the next day and there were pictures of us in like the Mail Online and you know, it, 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 they were horrible. Like Chloe and I, we were so sad and like, so it ruined, it ruined our, it ruined like the l last bit of our honeymoon mm. because we had no idea it was happening. The pictures, we looked at them and just thought, my God, we look absolutely hor horrible. You know, Chloe's a model. So she has that pressure too of people. You assuming, think you're going to lose jobs. You think yeah, she, she, you know, people, well, she probably sits there and thinks people think I look a certain way. And if I have to, you know, like you were just saying, like you have to look that way. So I think that made, that probably hasn't helped like the odd kind of person taking a picture, which is quite invasive. Mm. Um, mm. But then how, with, with bodies, body dysmorphia, how do you um, counter it? Because you, what you're saying, you know, and, and just by the way, just thank you for being honest, man. Cause that's right. pretty hard to say that, you know, that's what you're feeling today, right? That mm. dude, I, 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 like we have good days and bad days, right? All yeah. the time. So I really appreciate that. But, um, you know, how do you counter it? Because in your head, you know that it's, you're, you're not being sensible with thinking, you know that it's wrong. You're going, no, hang on a second. This is, this is obviously my body dysmorphia, my anxiety, whatever is kicking mm. in. How do you, in your mind now, try and push that away? I, 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 uh, I don't know. You don't I'm know. still struggling with it big time. So I'd be lying if I said I, mm. I kind of, I knew, I knew the answer to that question. I think I just have to sometimes just try and put things into perspective, really. As Chloe always says to me, like, when when you're 60 you'll look back now and go god i wish i looked like you know because you, you know metas metabolism slows down we're old we're wrinkly so i think that's the thing i just i try now as hard as i can to be in the moment and just appreciate it things could be worse like that's what i tell myself i could be you know mm. it's just something about acceptance though right where I always think accepting is one of the greatest things anyone can do. And it's actually the hardest thing. Yeah. Um, I remember, you know, for example, with, with Sophie, my fiance, I remember with her, I was, um, you know, I always juggled with the fact about being in a relationship, whether it was the right relationship and all these things. And I, and I really struggled with relationships. And um, I then realized that actually it was my anxiety, which was stopping me getting into these things. And finally I went, okay, why don't I just accept this? Yep. Accept this relationship, accept that it's good, accept all these things. And once you accept something, it actually works. Same with my anxiety, accept it. Is there a point of view that you could sort of say, right, just accepting the fact that you have this body dysmorphia, that you know that you're going to feel shit about it, the more that you accept it, does yeah. that help it? Or does that not? I think not? so, yeah, for sure. If you own it, if you own the yeah. way you feel, then ultimately you're in control of how you feel. So actually I think accepting it's probably the best thing you can do. Mm. Accepting, you know, knowing that you suffer with it, reading, reading up on it, um, knowing you're not alone because there will be a shitload of especially so many men. and this and is so the many thing, don't men. Talk about it. yeah men, men men yeah 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 i know like it's we crazy. don't we don't talk about it right like we post you know like if we post a picture it's funny isn't it like you know sophie's probably gets it there's support girls get the support from other girls a lot of the time it's yeah. like you know girls big girls up whereas with us guys it's like you, you can it i know even just getting like one of my mates my lad mates to just like a fucking Instagram post of mine. <laughs> when I'm like, every like helps. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, yeah, like, just to get that is like trying to, it's impossible. I, uh, there's a funny thing. I got, I got sent this article on the weekend, which is all about guys and loneliness. Yeah. You, I, it's crazy. I saw this why, thing. Why did you get sent that? Yeah, I know, my Sophie. Friend, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> she's trying to show you something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Said it to you. No, there, there's this because I'm getting married, right? And you start. Congrats, talk, by the way. Thanks, buddy. That's so kind. You you talk about like best men and ushers and all this kind yeah. of stuff. Um, and there was this big article which was literally just recently. I got sent it by a friend of mine, Fred, um, who sent it to me. And obviously, I think I think it was almost a cry from him where he probably felt a bit lonely. And it was all about that men to, in all. For women are just friends with each other. Women are always friends. So they, yeah. they talk all the time. They do these things. They're vulnerable with each other. And men aren't that at all. And actually to be a friend with other guys, you have to be a friend to them. And that's what we forget sometimes. Yeah. With guys, it's almost a game. It's like, now nah, they'll message me. Yeah. Oh, I'll man. wait for them to message me to say, let's go and have a pint or whatever it is. And actually it's because we have this sort of strong attitude and there, you don't understand the, the percentage of men within the UK who when they get married yep. um, and they start thinking about best men and ushers, they can't think of anyone. Yeah. And they can't think of it. They're like, oh yeah. God, I, I, I was friends with them like 10 years yeah. ago, but I haven't really spoken to that much. Because there's no deep connection there There's anymore. no deep connection when that's what we think we should be there's having. There's no past that small something. talk. Yeah. It's just small talk, isn't it? Oh, you're so right. Why do we do that? Why is I it like know. he should message me? I don't know. We like, we do. We it's challenge so messed our mates. Up. It is. It's so like... <laughs> Millie, do you have that ever? Not, not as much. I, yeah, I don't... No, well, you've not gone really... back to any of my. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, was that you? It was <laughs> Sorry, I had you saved as don't reply. Nice, yeah, I've got a few. Of You're also not as needy as I would say, Josh I, and I are. That's I, know, I, I am a bit. I, I do know what you mean, but I feel like the mates I don't necessarily play games like that. I'll just mm. say it. It's weird. Like, I was on holiday when I was on holiday recently. I was lying on there like day five, uh, and I was thinking, why none of my mates messaged me asking if I'm having a good time? <laughs> yeah. Like, why does that go in my head? Like, yeah, I know. So they're, they're not even thinking about that. They're, 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 they're not even thinking about it. They, they just don't, don't give a shit. They're going on with their lives <laughs> like we all do. But like, so now I've made a mental note. When they go, oh, I'm fucking asking. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Joe, I hope it rains. <laughs> yeah, You're yeah. playing the same I'm game. I'm playing the game. Yeah, that's what guys it's do. It's so weird. It's we, so we weird. We are so, we're complicated. And, and I think that, you know, we, we grow up and it's like, oh, men should just be this macho, simple, so, you know, provide and this kind of caveman, kind of whatever it is. Mm. But actually we are really... There's so much going on in here mm. that mm. people don't appreciate. And that's why, that's why I talk about it. That's why I talk about mental health in men in particular, because, you know, I'm doing something hopefully with Samaritans coming up where I'm, you know, becoming the ambassador for them. And, and I, I want to talk about that stuff because us guys just don't know how to articulate the way we feel mm. and talk about it. We just don't have this, even though there's a million and one things going on in our brain. We just don't have the capacity for some reason. Maybe we're not. Maybe we're not in a society where we feel it's okay to talk about it. I think that's that's the issue. Yeah. What are you, What is your thoughts on medication? Do you think it's a good thing or a bad? I'm thing? on the med. Really? Yeah. I'm on. I'm on antidepressants. Uh, I've been on antidepressants for just under a year now. Like, um, I think if you need some extra help, why Why would you not? If I was diagnosed with cancer tomorrow, I'd be straight in the in the hospital yeah, getting absolutely. chemotherapy as soon as possible or whatever the treatment was to, to help me so for me i think i i don't think it's the answer to everyone i don't think it's as simple as oh, i feel a bit shit i'm just going to take a pill and hopefully feel better it's it's a lot there's a lot more to it but i think mm. if you've gone about this the right if you've got some advice or you've gone to the doctors or you've got a bit of therapy or whatever it is and then you're still not feeling happy or feeling confident or your anxiety's taken over why not absolutely why not 100 like, percent. i'm proud like i genuinely am i genuinely am proud for talking about the fact i'm on medication for mental health i have no mm. i don't look at it and go oh, that's a bit how embarrassing i'm actually like you know what? i'm proud of myself for having the strength to realize i needed a bit more help than 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 what's out there at the moment and do and also and also the other thing is people are i always say this but it's true jordan peterson the, the psychotherapist yeah. said uh you know be with with the, the people talk about the side effects of um antidepressants right? and there are some right and but that's whatever it is but the side effects of of uh depression is suicide so which one do you rather take right absolutely 100 percent um and also i think the hardest thing for I, i'm assuming this right the hardest thing for someone with body dysmorphia i would say is people you know people always talk about antidepressants they go like it's weight gain and things like that and it doesn't have to happen to everyone but sometimes it does occasionally yeah so for someone like yourself that would put a fear in your mind straight away right big time and so that would almost resist you from giving them a go because you're like no no i can't do that so that's big an time. amazing moment for you that you've actually got past yeah. that yeah i think you get the leaflet when you the doctor tell you know talks you through them and you see these side effects and it's it's insane. I mean they're yeah, yeah, they're just yeah. covering every <laughs> angle. It's like it's yeah. like growing hair yeah. in places you wouldn't expect. So all of a sudden I kind of think I'm just gonna I don't know get hair on Lactate my elbow and things like, yeah, yeah. or just have a really <laughs> fucking hairy knee. You know what? You know you sit in there you're thinking Christ, where's his hair gonna come from? 
<laughs> which is pretty terrifying, but they have to cover like their back. So <laughs> I just think with this, you've just, I, I've luckily had a really good experience with them. I've not had any side effects I, as far as I'm aware. I don't notice they're very light. They're very small dosage so was that hair or, or was that, <laughs> was, <laughs> was <laughs> my eyebrows are a mess man. No, don't, don't, don't great, too man. closely no but. and that's brave of you to talk about it because a lot of people don't so i applaud you massively for that i uh, just with uni what is the one thing you miss about the band like if you look back at it and you go this is the one thing i miss was it did you guys party a lot we did mate we a lot did. of drinking a lot of drinking really too much no, 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 actually. No, I, I, I'm not a big drinker. I never have been. Uh, but it was just the experiences, it's just the red carpet stuff. It's the, and also it's quite nice when you do go to these kind of intimidating events or, or, or red carpet events or openings of whatever. Um, it's nice to have three other lads next to you. You're mm. a team. Yeah, because you kind of don't feel alone. And, um, but actually it has a, a reverse thing where it's like you're comparing yourself to them. So it, it kind of works. It kind of works two ways, really. But Do you become competitive in the band? Oh, bro. What? Jesus Christ. Is oh. that with loads of bands? Oh, oh, mate, every band. Every band is wow. insanely competitive. From how much you sing to what outfits you wear and to, to, to where you stand in the line. You know, like, mate, like, I, I'm pretty chilled-ish, yeah. but I want to stand in that middle. <laughs> No, I'm saying like, I'd be lying if, if yeah, I, of course. I don't want to be on the right. Like, <laughs> Give me that fucking so I made this joke where uh, <laughs> I made this joke. We did a show recently at the Palladium, which was fucking brilliant. I loved it. Uh, and George and I have always wound up the other two that we were the popular ones or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. So we were always together. We all seem to be like put together on this show, like on the one side. And I made a joke to the other two in the band. I said, well, I'm a bit worried if George and I are always next to each other, the whole audience is just going to kind of walk <laughs> over to that side. <laughs> and then, you know, the fucking lady is going to collapse. Like it was just this joke, but it's um, but slightly yeah, meaning at the same time. A little bit, kind of a little yeah. bit of a dig. Yeah. Like you two are fucking useless. No, they're great. But like, it's, um, it's funny. It's, it, that's hard to deal it with. Is, it is hard. And I think that's where my competitive I've always been a competitive bloke, like my football and sports. I've always been that competitive lad. So it, it, it comes out when I was in the band. Like you, you, you can't help it because you are pitted against each other. Like the management, mm. they tell you how many individual dolls you've signed, you know, sold, how many individual album covers. What's the point of that? How that... many Instagram followers, how many Twitter followers you've all got. You know, it becomes mm. very individual, even though you're a band. Wow. So it, it, yeah, it's competitive. You were going to be professional footballer, weren't you? Or oh, you, you no, wanted to? I wanted to be. I wanted, don't we all? <laughs> yeah. Soccer have, you do, have you done soccer? No, I haven't done soccer It's yet. a dream, right? Yeah, I love that. See, that's where I've got to get to. Yeah, <laughs> the positive is happening, but just not. Happen, yeah. Just I, when the other three break their legs. <laughs> you know I mean? Mark Wright, uh, he's been in there for about nine years. I don't, come on, Mark, move over, let me come in. Come on, or Mo Farah. <laughs> who, who even is? He doesn't even run anymore, does he? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Oh God, that's my dream, Mo. Yeah. I know, I know exactly. What you mean. And also, scoring a goal and that would just be, be the greatest feeling in the world. I would not stop. I would just try and do the longest knee slide ever. I wouldn't want the knee slide to end. <laughs> you know all your hair would come off your knees. Yeah, knees. All that, all those antidepressant. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Uh, just listen. I am. Um, I, I. It's been such a pleasure, man. No, I appreciate it. Honestly, dude, having you on. I like, and it's. It's so great when someone uh, speaks openly, but also I, I saw yourself caught yourself a couple of times there where you're like, ah, oh, am I going to tell the truth? Yeah, do you know what? Fuck, yeah. I'm going to tell the truth. Yeah. That's just so great. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of people, especially in this current climate, a lot of people are going through a lot of different shit. Yeah. Um, and we all have our own individual demons. And I still struggle. I know men and I both still struggle with actually talking about stuff. We just don't, you know, you just cover it up. Yeah. Um, and actually it's a real... Um, fresh attitude to see someone who talks about it so openly i appreciate um, that and dude, i'm so happy for you i saw on your instagram the other day and guys go and follow josh on instagram um i saw you go and do your show and yeah. you went out the back door yeah and there, and there was just people there so if we're not having that in so long and just seeing that you oh, still man. got these fans and just screaming you and all that it's wicked it's fucking great yeah it's lovely yeah. It's, it's, it's a good it's a good feeling so do you think you guys are going to release some music listen we've we've been offered a tour we've been funnily enough we're in conversations with like backstreet boys to be on there to be like the lead in support for them. And, and there's conversa there's some exciting conversations going on. Um, and then we've been offered a tour for March, April next year. So I've just got to, it's just got to be right. This time it has to be right. Mm. It, we we, we want to make sure that we're in a position where we protect ourselves yeah. as much as as much as possible. Because yeah, rather than just yeah, letting loose and going. I, I, I don't want it to be about, I just want it to be about the music, enjoying it, enjoying every second because that's what that's why i want to do it again because actually this time around i will genuinely appreciate every single yeah every single moment of it you know and you guys i'm sure are the same with like you know you've come from the show you guys are doing and it's like now 
you just have to appreciate what has come from yeah. that experience. Yeah. Like you're so lucky. much further down the line and you've got perspective now. So it's like, True. you're no longer this like super hungry. Yeah. You're just like, you're there, you're enjoying it. 100%. And focusing on the right things, I think. Yeah. I think that's for everyone, whenever they go into any industry, whatever it is, you're focusing possibly on the wrong things, whether it's cash, fame, yeah. validation, whatever it is. But actually now yours is just about, actually this is for the love of it. Having fun, mate. Life's yeah. so short, like Jesus Christ. Mm. Like, what makes you happy now? Netflix, <laughs> yeah. sofa, <laughs> yeah. my wife, good but, food. There you go. Simple, really things. Simple, simple things. Simple things. Mm. We all are. We we actually all are. When yeah. you strip it down. <laughs> oh, Josh, dude, thank you no, so thank you much, man. You're, mate, you're you're just uh, you're true buddy. You're a great dude, and and, and I and I I wish you all the luck in it. And I thank you so much for coming on. What we like to do at the end of the podcast yes. is leave our listeners with something inspirational. Nice. There you go. Hmm. This is my cue. This, this is your is you, cue yeah. to be inspirational. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever you want. I mean, <laughs> you say whatever, if you're not inspired yeah. after that podcast, thank then, you very much. You know, like, so no, you I don't mean that. If you haven't weird listened way. to it yet, yeah. If you're <laughs> just tuning in at the end for the for the last bit, then I've I've said all I need to say. No, just guys, like, just literally enjoy life because it's so short. And just if you are having a bad day, tell people, open up. A problem shared is a problem halved, right? The other way around. <laughs> Fuck's sake, that was so good. That as well. was good. You smashed it. Thank you. You yeah, smashed it. Thank you. That's it. I peaked far too early in this podcast. Josh, thank you Cheers, so much, buddy. Appreciate nice everybody. See you next week. Goodbye. Oh, man, just, just freaking, freaking, freaking.